Good evening. Good evening, Pastor Carr. Well, thank you. It's so good to be here with you tonight. We are celebrating the this probably since I've been here. A feast day in the church, the feast of Saint Timothy, Pastor and Confessor. We're going to learn a little bit more about who Timothy was and why we're remembering him today. It's good to be here to share God's word with you. A uh, few things in terms of announcements. This weekend we are celebrating. Live weekend, Sanctity of Life weekend, uh, Synod wide. So our church, national church body, is celebrating, giving thanks to God for His gift of created life um, at all stages. Um, and we're giving thanks to God that He has created us and that He has sent His Son Jesus to love each and every one of us. Um, and so there are things that we're going to be remembering in our prayers and um, things in your little insert here that you can read about and remember why it is that we have such a high view of human life, because it's created by God. So we are celebrating that. Stand, let us stand, let us join together, let us sing.
Amen. O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You discern my going out and my coming in. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, Lord. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will bring me up again. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God. I declare your power to the next generation, your might to all who are to come. You created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My frame was not hidden from you when I was woven together. All of the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I will praise you with the heart for your faithfulness, O oh my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. My mouth will tell of your salvation all day long. To the God who hears us and sees us always, and has known us forever, we confess our sins.
tonight comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, starting at verse 1. Paul came to Derby and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was a Jewess and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Our epistle reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 6, starting at the 11th verse. All right. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Jesus Christ, who while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot, spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Tonight's Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 24, starting at the 42nd verse. Jesus said, therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming. He would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all of his possessions. This is our gospel reading for tonight. Please be seated. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your servant, our brother, St. Timothy. Lord, we thank you for faithful men and women that you have raised up from old and today to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, a Messiah, a Savior, who is for all people. Lord, tonight I ask that you would bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts, Lord. May it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 One of the most important things that came out of the Reformation of Christ's Church is an understanding of the total access that we have to God and to His Word. No longer would the Church coming out of the Re Reformation need to access Jesus through inter intermediary priests. No longer would the church coming out of the Reformation need to access God's word through an unknown language and the teachings of the papacy. No longer would men and women come to know Jesus through fasts and feasts and church prescriptions and papal declarations. The church coming out of the Reformation would no longer be on the shaky ground of faith plus works, but rather on the solid foundation of faith alone. And through study 
and through the understanding of what God's Word actually says, no longer would Christians coming out of the Reformation, coming out of Rome, look to the saints for intermediary prayer due to their perceived super meritorious works. In fact, God's Word specifically says this in Romans 3, 23 and 24. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now, all means all. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. All have fallen short of the standards of righteousness that God has put forth. All are justified not by works, but by grace. And it's always, for everybody, a gift given through faith. There are, my friends, in fact, only two things in this universe. There is the Creator, and there is the creation. There is God, and there is man. And there is only one intercessor, one mediator between God and man, the God-man, Jesus Christ. Should we worship the saints of old? No. Should we pray to the saints of old? No. Should we remember and learn from the saints of old? Yes. Yes, we should. This is good. This is right. This is salutary. Just as we look to broken, imperfect biblical figures, we look to broken, imperfect Christian saints of old who have struggled some of the very same struggles we are experiencing today. We celebrate feast days for saints, which are always optional, but sometimes, I would say like now, optimal for us, as we need encouragement. We celebrate feast days for saints to give us wisdom and encouragement in difficult times. Do you know that everything that makes you and me anxious and fearful today are things that have made Christians anxious and fearful in times past. Do you know that the church has gone through a pandemic or two? Do you know that the church has indeed seen persecution? Do you know that the church has seen many changes in leadership? Do you know that the church has seen, looked forward to, an uncertain future? The church has seen wars, has seen famine, has seen disease, has seen revolution, has seen tyrannical governments and insane leaders before, and has seen philosophical changes and shifts in worldview over the past 2,000 years. And do you know where all of those saints, where all of those Christians, where all of those brothers and sisters, the believers in times past, do you know where every single one of them is now? In the loving arms of their Savior. Cared for. 100% completely, totally cared for. In the perfection of Christ's paradise. That is where they are. They are with Jesus. They are with our Father in heaven. And the book of Hebrews says this for us living here and now as we are in the hard part of this life. Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded then by these people, by these so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith. In all things, in all things, we ought to look to Jesus, who is our everything, who is our all in all. And that Jesus has given the world a gift. He has given this, his body. His very body, the body of Christ on earth, the hands and feet of Jesus in this time.
time in this place, the church. Both the church that has gone before us, we call it the church triumphant because they are triumphing now, and the church militant, we who are on earth in the battle today. Looking to the life and the faithfulness, the contributions of these saints of old can give us exactly what we need for life in the world today. And so this weekend we are observing the feast of St. Timothy, who was a pastor, who was a confessor of the faith. And this year it falls tomorrow, it falls on Sunday, and that is why we are celebrating. We know that Timothy, uh, we know a few things about him probably already, we know that Timothy was a protege of Paul. We know that he was a young pastor working in the early church. We know that there are two New Testament books with his name on them, two of what's known as the pastoral epistles. First and second Timothy were letters written from Paul to Timothy to encourage him in his ministry. But looking into the life of St. Timothy and finding encouragement for today, there were some things that maybe you did or did not know. And so tonight there are three things, three important things to know about Timothy. Number one, and I will hardly disagree with the video, number one, he was raised in the faith. He was raised, we know this, we, he was raised in the faith. Most times when we read about Christians, in the New Testament, we are reading about men and women who were called to follow Jesus, many times as adults. Many of these adult conversions, adult calls, were also dramatic ones. They were done in dramatic fashion. The disciples plucked off the seashore. Nathaniel, last week, being stunned at the all-knowing Jesus. Paul's once-in-a-lifetime encounter with the risen Savior. Every Christian that we read about in the New Testament either met Jesus or met somebody who knew Jesus. But what makes Timothy important, I really believe, is this. He is somebody just like you, really. He is somebody just like me. Some of us gathered here today have faith in Jesus Christ in our adult years, that we were converted as an adult. Maybe that's some of you. Many of us were raised in the faith. Many of us were taught about Jesus by our moms and our dads and our grandmas and our grandmas. Many of us can look back and not remember a time we did not believe in Jesus. That was Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says, this, this is Paul writing to Timothy. He says, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwells first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. The young pastor, he was quite young, Pastor Timothy was raised in the faith. He grew up in it, and he did amazing things in the early Christian church. Some of you may have dramatic conversion stories. Some of you may have an amazing testimony to give. Many of us do not. Timothy is a reminder that you can and you are called to do incredible things in Christ's church. You can do incredible things in and for the kingdom of God just as you are. You don't need to be a pastor or be friends with Paul, faithfully confessing the saving name of Jesus to those around you makes you a powerful instrument for God's kingdom. So number one, he was raised in the faith in many ways that we are right now. Number two, he was a missionary. Timothy was a missionary, we know this. Midway through the book of the Acts of the Apostles, Timothy comes upon the scene. A young Christian man that was very well spoken of, we are told by everyone. His mother was a Jew, his father was a Greek. 
Timothy began to work alongside Paul. This is what we are told in Acts 16, 3 and 4. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him on his missionary journey. And he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them uh, for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and the elders who were in Jerusalem. As Timothy joined Paul on his missionary journey, we are told that they went to deliver some decisions reached by this council in Jerusalem. So what was that council and what were the decisions? Something very, very, very important for the life of the early church and something very important for your Christian life as well. That important church council that took place, you can read about more in the book of Acts, but it was essentially this. There was an important question that came before the church. What should we do in response to the Holy Spirit Falling on the Gentiles and their expressed and even courageous faith in Jesus Christ. Basically this, should all followers of the king of the Jews become a Jew first? Should Gentile men being washed clean in the blood of the Jewish Messiah first have the mark of circumcision? Peter the rock, stood up and gave an eloquent speech that essentially said this. Why would we have the Gentiles hold to something, be confined by something, that we, neither we nor our fathers were able to do? The leader of the church at that time, the leader of the church of Jerusalem, James, brother of Jesus, agreed. He decided, this was the decision, that if this good news would go out, that it would go out to all people, because Christ died for all people. And that there should be no stumbling blocks in the church. No stumbling blocks to the Gentiles receiving what Christ had won for them. That was the decision. That was the good news that Paul and Timothy got to proclaim on their missionary journey. Paul took that word out to the Gentiles. This was the joyous proclamation that Timothy shared. Now just think about it. Timothy, half Jew, half Gentile, began his ministry by delivering the good news, Jesus is for everyone. And although Timothy was circumcised before the missionary journey, because Paul was really trying to keep stumbling blocks away from all people, the next fully Greek pastor raised up by Paul by the name of Titus was not circumcised. Baptism, the reception of the Holy Spirit, the confessed faith in Christ, these, and not circumcision, these things would be the mark of God's people. Number three, he defended the Christian faith from false teaching. So he was raised in the faith. He was a missionary who got to share that Christ was for everybody. That was his mission. And number three, he defended the Christian faith from false teaching. Now I'd really like to stand up here today and say that the early Christian church had it going on. That they, they had no problems, but that really wouldn't be true. Now, in some ways, they really had it going on. They did. They were strong in the face of persecution, much stronger than us, confessing in the midst of certain death, and they were very zealous in their evangelism. In other ways, they struggled in some of the same exact ways we find ourselves as the church struggling today. Factions, we know, had crept into the early church. Paul addresses them in his letter to the Corinthians. Some were saying, well, I follow Paul. Some were saying, I follow Apollos, who was a fiery 
future. So he said, I call Cephas, who is Peter. Paul even intimates in the book of Philippians, which we are studying in the online Bible study right now, that some were even excited about Paul's imprisonment because that means that they would have more attention on their ministry for Christ. There were fractures in the church, not only arising from factions, but also partiality because of class. And on top of this all, false teaching threatened the church from the very beginning. Can, can Christianity really be the only way to eternal life? Did Jesus really physically rise from the dead? Is Jesus Christ really, really God? Was Jesus of Nazareth really, really a human man, or did he just look human? Was Christianity really the only, truly, the all-encompassing worldview, or was it just one of the many philosophies which you can live by? These are all questions the early church asked and had to deal with. These are all questions that Paul and Timothy talk about in the New Testament epistles. These are the things that Timothy pastored in the midst of. And as the church sought to answer these early questions, all while dealing with good old-fashioned human sinfulness, Timothy was encouraged by Paul to stay true to the faith and to confess its truth and pastor the people that God had put into his care faithfully. From 1 Timothy 6, 20 and 21, this is the very end of the letter. He says, O oh, Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Guard the, the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swerved away from the faith. Grace be with you. This is how Paul's first letter to Timothy concludes with an admonition to stay true to the faith. Paul says, do it by guarding what you have, by guarding the deposit entrusted to you. That deposit, my friends, that faith, that gospel that lives in us, that is the same exact deposit entrusted to you and to me. We have been faithfully handed down this faith. It has been given to us through people like Timothy and other saints of old. We have been faithfully handed down, painstakingly handed down God's word. Christians like Timothy, broken, imperfect people, have been raised up to declare the truth in the midst of whatever is going on in the world. And this deposit of faith has been handed to you. This deposit of the good news has been given to you. In fact, it lives in you. This deposit, as Paul says, has been entrusted to you. Not to hold on to deep down inside and never let it out as people who would light a lamp. And then put it under a basket. This deposit is guarded in truth, yes, and shared in purity. Guarded in truth and shared in purity. So that others may see the light of Christ and give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Today, St. Timothy reminds us of three important things. Number one, People raised in and raised with faith are just as much called to give a zealous witness of Christ as people like Paul and the twelve disciples. Number one. Number two, the missional truth going out into the world is that Jesus is for all people. Number three, we must guard, protect, and preserve the truth of God in Jesus Christ from all falsehood, just as people who came before us did, so that we might share this deposited faith that has been
been entrusted to us. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would guard our hearts and minds in the truth of Jesus Christ, in the truth that he is for all people, in the truth that you have called each of us to be missionaries, each of us to be evangelists, each and every one of us to share the light of Christ in our world. Lord, so that the whole world might know you and what you have done. Lord, we ask that you would help us to guard this faith and not just guard it inside, Lord, but to guard it and to share it in purity so that all people might see our uh, see the glory of our God and our Father in heaven. We thank you, Lord. We ask that you would enable us to do so. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand and Sing our compassion song.
as the present form of this world passes away, we ask that you would give constancy and contentment to your people in their God-given stations. Lord, this day that we ask that you would enable each and every one of us to promote, Lord, the sanctity of created human life, Lord, that you have called forth into this world. From conception until the end that you choose, Lord, we hold up your gift of life for the whole world, Lord. And we ask that you would continue to enable us to share the gift of life with all around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, preserve our nation with its rulers, call to repentance those who have forgotten you. Lord, this day we ask that you would be with those who are... Um, you have placed as leadership over us for Joseph, our president, Michelle, our governor, all who serve for the good of this people. Do not let disaster befall us, but preserve us in peace and in quietness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, turn us from every distraction and anxiety of the dealings of this world that would draw our hearts away from your blessed gospel and its end eternal life. Give us confidence in the resurrection and the peace of a clean conscience by the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name. Graciously behold and help those for whom we pray. Lord, we ask uh, that you would be with uh, Sonny Para, Lord, friend of Jim Bacon, hospitalized uh, with COVID. We ask that you would give him healing in this time um, and that you would uh, give him help in the days to come. Lord, we um, ask that you would be with, um, with Pam, Paragon's cousin, who is, oh, we give you thanks, she is much improved, and that you have given healing in this time. We ask that you would continue to bless her. Uh, we ask that you would be with Pastor Mark Klusik and his family as they mourn the sudden death of his wife. Um, Lord, we ask that you would um, give a peace that passes understanding, a hope of resurrection that is found in Jesus Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, Lord, we ask you to grant us. For the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As Paul wrote to Timothy, may you guard what has been entrusted to your care. May you turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what the world falsely calls knowledge. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we will lay aside every weight and sin which tries to cling so closely. We will run with endurance the race set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. May grace, peace, and strength be yours from the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our final song. <laughs> 